Okay, this is step two of this laser collimation procedure. Now what I've done with the Awiglata collimator is I have inserted onto the end here the holographic projection rings attachment, optional attachment. Install this into the focuser. Again, don't tighten it up too much. It just needs to be enough just to slightly pinch it and just so you can slightly rotate that around without there being any flap whatsoever in there. Okay. Now what that is now doing is projecting that series of rings onto the primary, sorry, onto the secondary. So they're being projected onto the secondary, which in turn reflects the rings back onto the primary mirror. Now, the purpose of this step is to ensure that those rings on the primary mirror at the back are perfectly concentric. They need to be perfectly concentric and the way that we make them like that is by adjusting the collimation nuts here, or the collimation allen bolts here. We adjust those to tip this so that we can get those rings on the mirror concentric. So again, just to recap what's happening here, is that we are projecting concentric rings from the collimation device. They are hitting the secondary mirror and then being reflected back on to the primary. Now, in order to do these, um, or in order to do these adjustments, it requires tiny, tiny tweaks on these three collimation bolts, and they tend to be quite stiff to turn. Okay, but turn they turn they will, yeah. But they're quite stiff. It requires tiny, tiny little tweaks. Even a, even a twentieth of a turn is enough to adjust the collimation, and you'll see it move on the rings at the back. Now, I'm not sure whether you can see those rings from my camera here because they're quite faint on the back, and I'm not sure whether the camera will actually pick them up or not. Hopefully, they will. But if they don't, I'm, what I'm going to do is include. Uh, some photographs of them which I've, which I've also taken. So those rings are being projected onto that back mirror, onto the primary mirror and our objective when we finish step two is to have perfectly concentric set of rings on that back mirror, on that primary. And it can sometimes help to do that by adjusting the focuser, just moving it in or out, so that we get a ring on the back which is right near the edge, or maybe a three or four millimeters or half an inch from the edge, then we can compare that ring with the bit around it where there isn't no ring, if you like, if you understand me. And by that means, we can get those really, really accurate. Now, one of the things that I found uh, personally, and again, you can, cal you can calibrate just like that, in, in other words, you can calibrate the secondary mirror in the way I've just prescript described. But I also use one of these, a Cheshire. So what I do is I see clearly that that may need some calibration or it may need collimating, that secondary mirror. I take the holographic projection out, I put the Cheshire in, then what I do is I adjust using the Cheshire to get the dot right in the middle of the surrounding rings. So I adjust it with this, then I put the holographic attachment back in to ensure that the circular rings now match the fact that I got that dot dead center. Or if you like, you haven't got to bother with a Cheshire and you can tweak these manually looking at the rings in the back. However, just, um, just be aware that those rings can be a little bit tricky to see. You need to make your room quite dark in order for them to be visible. Okay, so let's just recap what we're trying to do here. We are trying to get that ring pattern from the holographic attachment reflected off of the secondary onto the primary, and we want perfectly concentric circles on that primary at the back. Once we've achieved that, we've completed stage two. Now, an interesting phenomena that you get here is that that pattern that's reflected back onto the primary is in turn reflected out the front of the telescope onto the wall, onto my wall, and there you go. That is being reflected out of the front of the telescope 
In other words, the reflection is coming from the hourglass collimator off of the secondary onto the primary and then onto the wall. This next pattern on the wall is for our third step of collimation. So that is what we're going to talk about in the next step. So hopefully you found that useful. Step two of this procedure, let's go on to step three.